say how uh, grateful we are to uh, participate in this event, Coaches versus Cancer. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for our program, our, our, our student athletes, our student body, fans and alums to be able to come down to this venue um, and with this triple header and to do it all for a, uh, such a positive cause and, and for all the, all the universities in the state to kind of uh, rally together to fight, uh, fight cancer. It's, it makes it ex extra special. Um, as, in terms of the game today, I thought obviously we got off to a, a slow start. Um, we were a little bit anxious to get out on the court. And, uh, but this, this uh, tremendous rivalry, I think, brings out the best in everybody. And uh, we played a more energetic second half, uh, played uh, much more like we've been practicing, and, and guys were, were aggressive on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. I thought our big guys really set the tone and really kind of uh, established themselves on the backboards. And um, you know that, that allowed us to get out and transition a little bit, get some easy baskets, and, and, and get our rhythm back in the second half. Well, I think you know any basketball team. You have to you have to take what the de defense gives you, and you know certainly their 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 zone. I thought kind of kept us off balance a little bit in the f second half, uh, first half, and then second half we we knew we had to get into the paint either by the dribble or a post touch. And once we started doing that, you know we got better quality shots. And these two guys up here really can shoot the ball. So if we can get them looks, uh, whether it's man or zone, um, you know we're very confident that they'll be able to step into them and knock them down. Well, I think you got to look at different points of the game, right? So, you know, I think we got to get a little bit of flow in the middle of the game, and I thought we did that, where everybody gets a touch on the ball. You know, basketball is a rhythm game. When you're in rhythm, it, it's really fun to watch and play. Um, you know, so we tried to get a little better flow, and I, th I think you could notice that. Uh, but still, at the end of the game, you know, we had a big bucket, and Scotty came up with a big bucket for us. You know, we got to make sure that he gets enough touches uh, because he's an outstanding player. You know, one of the best players in our conference, and we got to make sure that he has an effect on the game. I was proud of his patience uh, because in the zone, it was kind of tough to find him and get him. But uh, I thought he he really kind of gave us the backbone of our defense t with his effort on the backboard today. I think he had you know, 10 rebounds or so and, and really uh, solidified our defense and allowed us to get out and run. Well, you know, I thought we played tentative in the first half. I, I thought we, you, you know, we're, it's a feel and out process and, and we just want to make sure in the second half that we, we play with a little bit more energy and a little bit more of attacking mentality and um, you know, Devon gives us that spark. I mean, he's, he's very, very quick. He's crafty with the ball, and he's able to get to the basket and get into the lane. I think at that point in time, he, he really helped pick us up. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's you have to make shots, and I thought BU did an outstanding job of that in the first half, and and, and we didn't. Um, and but once Davey got in rhythm and, and Quincy got in rhythm, you know, it was a, it was a lot better, uh, you know, for everybody because there was more flow to the offense. But uh, like I said, uh, you, you know, w w with the game on the line, I, I have tremendous confidence and trust in both these guys. If they got an open look, we want them to step into it and not think about it and just let it go. Yeah, um, just honored and blessed to be back with my teammates. You know, I sat out last year, so it was an unbelievable feeling um, to step out there. I had, I'm going to be honest, I had a little bit of nerves going. Didn't want to do too much, do too little. So um, second half, teammates found me, Dave found me, TJ found me, and kept encouraging me at halftime. Coaches were in my ear all the time. Pick your head up, positive body language, and I sort of got into a rhythm at the end thanks to my teammates. So it's truly blessed.
How far has uh, Dave's game come since you last played with him on the court? A long way. <laughs> oh, man, I like the new Dave, the aggressiveness, the shots he takes. This is the stuff he's done in the summer, all summer, working on his game, the one-on-one -on -one move. So truly proud of him as well. Unbelievable. <coughs> Driving, you're under the basket. How did you spot uh, Q um, on the wing for the three? How did, how did you even see him? Um, uh, that was a set play we run, so, and I refused it, and I knew, um, I trusted him that he was going to be in that spot, so as I was driving, I kept my head up, and he was there, and I had confidence in him to make it, so, and he made it. What did you say? Oh, um, I knew he was going to be there, and that's how I saw him, so. Dave, could you just talk about your progression and what have been the keys to you and, and how and your and your growth as a player? Um, I think um, freshman year we had John and Joel, so I had to just play my role. And coach always talks about play your role, would be the best you can be at, at your role. And past two years, um, I've had to step up and I've been working on my game. Um, coach asked me to shoot the ball, so. Step in and shoot him. I, I think you're going to like what you see from, from both these guys. Uh, certainly, they put in a lot of hard work over the summer. Uh, Q's in a little bit of a transition. He's played most of his career at the power forward, and he's stepped out, played a little small forward today. And, and Davies uh, just does so much for us. His versatility allows us to, to move him to the point guard or, or uh, you, you know, move him off the ball if we need a little bit more scoring. And he's got that feel an IQ for the game that, that, that makes the game fun to play and fun to coach. So both these guys, uh, you know, are, are in new roles this year. They're returning players, but they're in new roles. And, um, you know, I think they're gonna, both going to uh, develop as the year goes along. Uh, Dave, you hit two corner threes towards the end on the stretch. How were you able to be so successful with the game on the line? Um, I don't know, it was just one of those days where the shots were going in. and. Um, got to thank my teammates for finding me in the open spots. Um, trusting coach uh, with calling the right plays, and I just stepped in and shot him. Yeah, for the players, is there any extra motivation you guys have playing against BU? And coach talked about this at practice, how now it's, it's a budding rivalry and all the games come down to the wire. Do you guys feel a little bit of uh, this, put, put more effort into it because it's BU? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> every year this is always the opener, so you never want to lose to be. We see them all the time. We play pickup during the summer. There's always trash talking, like friendly competition going back and forth. So this is a, I think it's a big game, the season opener. You always got to have the first one, always. Um, just talk, Coach, talk a little bit about the bench, too. Um, bringing Reggie Spencer off the bench, that's an adjustment from last year. And then also Devon Begley, freshman, uh, sure. coming in with some energy. Sure, and I think we got a few other guys there that you, the game didn't set up this year, but I, th this way today. But I think that, you, you know, our, we got a lot of guys that I think you're going to see contribute uh, as the season goes along. But Devon gives us a little bit of versatility. He can play with his size and length and quickness. He can. He can play virtually three perimeter spots, so we can go smaller and a little quicker. And he's got a skill set that's uh, pretty unique, being left-handed, I think, is an advantage. He gets into the lane and he goes. Uh, Reggie is just that, um, you, you know, you can't, can never underestimate Reggie Spencer's heart. Uh, you know, he had off-season surgery. Uh, he's not 100% back, but, uh, you, you know, his mind and his heart and his competitiveness is there. And he gives us that edge, and I think you saw the game change a little bit down the stretch. He stepped to the free throw line, made his shots. He got a big rebound, good finish. And, uh, you know, Reggie, Reggie's just a winner. So those guys give us an extra uh, bump off the bench, as well as, uh, you know, the guys you get to see. I think Jimmy, Jimmy Marshall's had a tremendous summer, and he's going he's gonna to contribute. And C.J. Hill and, and, and Kwesi Ibaka all had tremendous, tremendous summers for us. So I'm looking forward to seeing them contribute uh, later on in the season.
I, I had a little bit of deja vu with uh, Devon Begley coming in as a freshman and having a great performance, much like TJ Williams did last year. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the mindset that Devon Begley's in as a freshman to come in and be one of the first players really attacking the well against that 2-3 zone defense? Yes, I mean, I think he's a, he's a very confident young player. He's, he's, he's a gym rat. He really wants to be good. Uh, all his teammates uh, really enjoy playing with him because he's, he's, he's always got his head up and he's, he gets into the lane. He creates easy baskets for people. Um, and, he's, and, he, and he plays the game with enthusiasm. He's always got a smile on his face, uh, and, and, and it's fun to see. I mean, he's, got, he's a freshman, and he's got to learn, uh, but, but, but that kind of enthusiasm uh, can be contagious. And so I think he, he's, he's uh, in a position where he can really provide us a spark uh, and go. And I, you know, very similar to TJ last year, there were some um, growing pains with him, but I thought he played his best basketball at the end of the year. Uh, the last six weeks or so, he was a tremendous player for us. And I think Devon's just going to get better week after week. Coach, it's <clears throat> excuse me. Coach, it seemed like you wanted to get Scott Etherton the ball early and often, but he didn't. He, I, he did most of his scoring, I think, in the second half and only got six points. How do you look to adjust your strategy moving forward so you can get him the ball and keep pounding it inside more? Yeah, it's, it's, Scott's a very experienced player. He's a terrific player. Uh, you know, I thought today, and he wasn't alone. Uh, Quincy mentioned it earlier. I thought we just came out with a little bit of uh, uh, jitters, and we didn't really hit the ground running. But I think, you know, when the game was on the line, I thought he hit a big uh, bucket under two. Um, and, y you know, he stepped up when he needed to. And I thought he, he affected the game without without scoring the ball, as he typically does, by really just dominating the backboard. So. He's a, he's he's going to get his points, and he's he knows that. But he's such a team player that he's just ready ready and willing to help any way he can. And today it was his defense and rebounding and and timely scoring that that we needed. Coach, could you speak to TJ's performance? He sort of had a Rondo esque stat line, and how important it is to have your floor general being so impactful in all aspects of the game. Well, I think you know. I think he had eight assists today and uh, and, and nine rebounds, and all, all on the defensive end. And we've urged our guards uh, and our perimeter players. We have some size on the perimeter, and when our guards rebound, we can run. Um, you know, because there is no outlet. So if Davey gets the ball on a defensive rebound, or TJ gets the ball, Quincy gets the ball, we can really ignite our break and get get some easy baskets. So I thought he uh, he did a tremendous job of that today. He really rebounding down and, and getting into the lane and, and pitching in there. And then uh, second half, he was very aggressive, threw some great passes, got into the lane, used his, used his size and his body really well, and, and found his teammates. So, uh, you know, and, and uh, he's, he's uh, I think he's going to, you know, keep evolving uh, during the year. But I think being out there with some veteran players like Davey and Quincy, I think it allows him to, to pick his spots and be aggressive. Uh, just one thing I noticed uh, from BU's end at the end of it was they had three of their more important players got into foul trouble with um, Alston and uh, Nathan getting four fouls each and Hankerson getting three. How important was it to try and get BU into foul trouble if you were trying to do that so that you could put them on their heels and get well, an, an edge offensively? You know, I, I don't know it was a deliberate uh, design to try to get them in foul trouble, but I think what happens is size takes over, right? So that's where you're going to get your fouls in and near the rim. And you know when our when our big players started to exert themselves, I think it was the size di size differential that really allowed us to to create that the foul dilemma for them. But obviously, if you can win the foul game, if you can get the line more, and if you can get into the other team's bench, it's a huge advantage. And I think that's one of our advantages is that we 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 have some front court depth, and we we can we can do that, and it manifests itself in a couple of ways. And one of them is is the foul game. <laughs> 